Welcome back everybody. So we got our SIPs mock-up put together. We learned a ton by doing that. And I wanted to jump into our top three pros and cons about building with SIPs. So let's jump into that. So number three on the pro side absolutely has to be energy efficiency. I'm not going to spend a ton of time talking about it because there's just, that's all the information that there is out on these things. It's almost kind of frustrating. Uh, they're super energy efficient. There's nothing in there to thermally bridge in between the interior and the exterior. So it makes them very energy efficient. They have a high R value, all that. There's a ton of videos out there about that. So. That's all the time I'm going to spend on that. So number two on the pros side for us has to be the strength. The industry kind of doesn't do a very good job of explaining how strong these things actual, actually are. Um, and they're pretty confusing when you look at them. You know, it's a couple of sheets of OSB and a foam core. Um, and it don't really get the whole idea of, of, how these things actually work. And it's hard to find that information out there on the web. So I went ahead and I put together, if you look at our other, one of our other videos, our SIPS construction video. So this is a two foot piece of wall segment. Now in a standard 16 inch on center two by construction, you would have this much load bearing surface. So it'd be two two by fours or two by sixes, whatever you're using. And on a SIPS panel, because this OSB is actually your load bearing surface and you've got a sheet on the inside and the outside and the foam core holds it together solid, you actually end up with this much load bearing surface compared to this much in this two foot section. So it's actually twice as strong just looking, uh, you know, the difference between a two by four and then the OSB being the load bearing surface. And I, like I said, I feel like the industry does a really poor job of demonstrating how strong these things actually are. Um, you'll see a lot of timber frame houses that are using SIPS panels as you know exterior walls. You don't need the timber frame in there. Um, these SIPS panels are perfectly sound supporting the roof and all that stuff. Uh, so, you know, just something to think about. So number one on the pros side absolutely has to be ease of construction. When you start looking at how the system goes together, you're sending your blueprint off to a manufacturer who's going to cut all of your panels, label them, get all the rough openings, everything all set up at a factory, usually on a CNC machine. Um, and everything goes together very well. Uh, nice tight fitting, everything's square. Um, so there's a huge upside to that. Also, it feels very much like standard two by stick framing. Um, if, if you've done any kind of, uh, stick framing, it's, you, you're gonna feel fairly comfortable, fairly quick on how everything goes together. There's still a lot of dimensional lumber in here that you're using to hold everything together. Uh, screws, nails, you're using some sealants and stuff. Um, so it transitions really well. Um, and a couple of guys can put together a house fairly quickly because you're putting up you know, an interior, exterior insulated wall, uh, you know, a big section there. Most of the panels are actually bigger than, you know, four by eight sheets of, uh, of plywood. Uh, and so you're getting these big chunks of square foot of wall put up, um, you know, fairly rapidly. Uh, so that absolutely has to be, you know, one of our top, you know, our number one pro, uh, especially with our short building window up, you know, where we're building, um, being able to dry in the structure relatively quickly is super important for us, uh, especially as a DIY project. So number three on the con side for us, 
uh, is going to be running electrical and plumbing in these things. Uh, we're not running any plumbing because these are exterior walls and we designed our house to not have any plumbing in the exterior walls. Um, that can be done, but uh, I'm pretty sure it'd be a pretty good pain in the butt, uh, especially if you need to run a bigger drain line or something. Um, electrical, probably on par with standard stick construction. Um, definitely not as easy as it was with the ICF to run electrical in that. Um, one thing about it uh, with the SIPs is pre-planning uh, where you need electrical chases and stuff run uh, is going to be important because you're going to want to get those all cut in at the factory and not try and be putting those in in the field. Um, they come with a, you know, a standard uh, electrical chase in at standard outlet height and switch height. If you need something beyond that, uh, you're going to want to talk to them about it and get that installed at the factory just to make it easier. Um, like I said, electrical probably isn't that uh, much different than standard 2 by construction stick framing. Um, but uh, plumbing, I can definitely see where that would be, you know, a pretty big pain in the butt, especially since you can't just, you know, cut out a section of this uh, sheeting because that is your load bearing material. Um, you would have to drill in and then fish through uh, and then, you know, come out another hole somewhere else uh, or you're going to affect the uh, load bearing capabilities of your wall. So something to keep in mind. So number two on the con side is going to be the ability to remodel. Definitely not out of the question to be able to, you know, have a room addition or something uh, with a SIPS house. Um, it's just going to take some extra planning and you're probably going to want to consult with uh, a structural engineer. Let them know what you've got um, and then kind of go from there. And that kind of all stems from the fact that, you know, the the exterior you know the the osb sheeting on both sides of this is your load bearing uh, structure so if you start taking too much of that out cutting long slits in it um, you're compromising the structural integrity of the panel so it's you know kind of something to definitely be aware of um, you know i'm a diyer and a dreamer i you know have lots of thoughts of what I'd like to do in the future. Additions are definitely out there in my head. Um, so being able to do that later on, I'm trying to pre-plan, well, if I want to put an addition in here, I should probably build this wall a little bit different, um, you know, just so that I can allow myself some flexibility uh, when I do get to that point, if I do want to put that addition on. So it's just something to keep in, uh, keep in mind. Uh, definitely not, uh, you know, a, a no go is just, uh, you, you gotta think about some of this stuff. So number one on the con side, uh, has to be how difficult it is to really understand SIPs panels and how they work. Um, I think this is more of just an information thing. And I think that, uh, the industry as a whole, all the manufacturers, everybody on that end has done a horrible job of kind of, you know, explaining what these things are, how they work, uh, what the benefits are. If you go out there and you're looking for, inf for information, like 90% of the information you're going to get is they're energy efficient. Uh, and then you get another like 5% of their fast and they're going to save you time and money. Um, and you can kind of put all that together in your head. Uh, and then you're still looking at this thing going like, well, but how does it, how is it so strong? I don't understand. Um, I know I did a ton of research trying to figure out, you know, if I really want to go with these and, uh, you know, I was able to figure out that they're energy efficient. Uh, that all made sense to me. It's a great big solid foam core with no thermal bridging. Like that makes sense. I get it. Um, but there's very little, um, and what little information there is, isn't great about how these things are actually strong. And maybe I just missed that stuff, but I, man, I swear to God, I looked at a ton of YouTube videos, did a lot of reading, you know, trying to find somebody that had a good explanation and, you know, 
it was a combination of you know a bunch of little segments of videos so that's definitely something i think that the industry as a whole can do better at and hopefully i've an answered some of those questions for you guys um you know exactly how strong these things are um and why they're so strong uh just I found one blurb about this being the load bearing surface and that kind of made some things click for me um, that uh, it just hadn't dawned on me. I'm so used to seeing this OSB as an exterior sheeting and in my head uh, I just kept seeing it, well it's just a sheeting so how's that foam supposed to support everything? Didn't really click that this is actually acting the same way that a 2x4 would act in a you know standard stick built house um and then when i started you know doing the math and figuring out there's oh gosh there's a lot more structure there than i'm realizing um you know that's that that's really when it kind of changed for me um i was sold on the you know ease of construction and the and the energy efficiency early on that's you know that part was easy to understand you know, they're building, they built, uh, you know, the research station down in Antarctica out of this stuff. So that told me that it was good for building in a remote location with a short building season where you needed energy efficiency. So, I mean, that was easy. It was, it was the structural um, hurdle in my mind for me to get over that these were actually strong enough to build a house out of. And it wasn't just, you know, a... Uh, a Yeti cooler with some OSB on the outside. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you have any specific questions, leave a comment below. I'll answer them the best that I can. And we'll get you some more real world, um, you know, video and explanations as we start going up with our second story up there at the property. So we'll see you on the next video.